Amazon. Show starts by making me immediately stare directly into the sun. Animated or not, I started watching this with all the lights off in the room, and now I need new retinas. Superhuman evasion training. I'm supposed to learn to tuck and roll away from a guy who can shoot lasers from his eyes, or control minds, or kick a goddamn school bus to the moon? In an alternate reality where White House guards need to be prepared to deal with superhuman combatants, the simple concept of closing the gate between vehicles seems to have gotten past these two, along with anyone who has a fake ID. Or a Dunkin' Donuts perks card, for that matter. Are you gonna be gone the whole time? All friggin' week? Two. All of Matt's spring break. Who gets two weeks of spring break? And if there's a school that does, I hate you. And I'll send you anyways. The boy is obsessed with the Beatles. Being obsessed with the Beatles anytime after 1991. He stared down his demons and he... He's never... Why don't I just make some hot cocoa to cheer up my sweet boy? This is supposed to be condescending, but hot cocoa is delicious, and Steve doesn't make him follow through with this promise. We were supposed to be inside. Oh, I should have never trusted the flawed calculations of a clone. Clone shaming. Also, this Smurfs reboot went a little too gritty for my taste. Refreshing. Kind of tickles. And it's wasteful. They've been pelting them with zero effect for 30 seconds now, so why keep going? Your tax dollars at work, am I right? <laughs> Huh? This John Hamm cameo has been right there watching how bullets don't hurt them and he still takes a shot? Kinda feel he deserves whatever comes his way at this point. I would give this a sin for War Woman and the Immortal both doing three-point landings, but Martian Man essentially does a one-point landing, so I'll take one back. So that's the two, and then you subtract the one, and then, you know what, forget it, I hate math, just add a sin. Cool, we've got Fish Guy, Stretchy Groot, Discounts Wonder Woman, Batman, Wolverine, and Flash, and Chroma Key Set Intern? Also, superhero posing instead of immediately getting to work. Did you come here to fight or audition for Legendary? I wouldn't normally move so fast, but- Hiring Michael Cudlitz to do a Russian accent. And I love Michael Cudlitz, but based on the fact that Steven Yun, Lauren Cohan, Lenny James, Chad L. Coleman, and Sonequa Martin-Green are also in this show, feels like there was a Walking Dead cast quota that had to be met. <laughs> Mahler Twin thinks punching through this wall would be easier than punching through this window right around the corner. You're welcome. Sassing those who are no longer present. We can take it from here. Too dangerous for you. Throwing someone straight up into the air is not the same as getting them to safety. This is pretty much like getting thrown out of a 12-story window because the building is on fire. Sure, Omni-Man catches them, but nowhere was this scheme agreed upon prior to the Immortal tossing them like clay targets at a skeet shooting range. I had him. But I wanted him to think he was going to fall to his death because that's how I have fun. Evacuation complete. Now we can cut loose and focus on taking these brutes down. Hmm. According to my interpretation of Heart of Darkness by Joseph Conrad, the Guardians of the Globe may just as well fall into the category of brutes with the Mahler twins. I purport that War Woman's evocation of the Guardians will in this instance fall short of addressing the underlying moral and ethical questions one must ask regarding the use of superhuman force in the battle against the ever-present and would-be forces of evil. Also, she said evacuation. <laughs> this teamwork makes the dream work segment of the Guardians of the Globe handling the steroid-enhanced Blue Man group might be inspiring, but it makes no sense. First, Green Ghost drops them into pavement they've already shown they're stronger than, at which point Martian Bland Hunter wraps them up for containment so Flash Borden can land a few non-effective punches. Then they let him go. Why? Apparently so Fish Dude can free them and also maybe soak them with water? At which point Bruce Plain can drop a couple bombs on them and She-Ra can pool host them on top of each other? Which I guess ends the battle? This is such a stupid game plan, I'm giving the show 15 sins just for insulting our intelligence. I used to change your diapers, kid. There's nothing going on down there I haven't seen before. The often overused I'm your mom and I've seen your genitals cliche. That being said, she's not nearly concerned enough that her son's reading something called Seance Dog. If my mom caught me reading Seance Anything, that would definitely be grounds for a discussion at least. And yes, I know the Science Dog reference, but your reference doesn't outweigh my sheltered childhood, damn it. You should be overjoyed to see your parents passionately expressing their love for each other. No, he shouldn't. And nor should he have to. I don't know the story behind why the high school is called Reginaldville Johnson, and I don't care. I just know it's awesome. Long live Carl. I can't believe the Guardians of the Globe let them get that close to killing the president. William would be invincible at TV sins. What kind of schedule is this? Mark has three free periods every day and apparently no classes on Friday? Even in this reality, the school system sucks. You're such an omni-maniac. Way to root for the underdog. Big fan of the Yankees, are you? William thinks a superhero with a high success rate isn't cool. I don't even watch baseball, but if every time the Yankees won a game it prevented a catastrophic loss of life, I'd probably root for them as well. Quit playing games. I know you're crazy about me. Vanity. No man has ever run away this fast after being kicked in the balls. 
Oh, you want to run away, but nature dictates that you must cower in the fetal position for a while first. Millions of miles from here, out in deep space, is the planet Viltrum. Expositional fathering. Exposition? That's when I met your mother. The dialogue suggests that this scene is depicting Omni-Man saving Debbie, but it looks more like he's threatening to drop a car on her. Also, show should get credit for not making us wait over 200 episodes to meet the mother just to have her die 30 minutes later. But you made me think of all that bullshit. So I'm going to send you anyways. Canada t-shirts that say Canada on them instead of how do you like my t-shirt, you hoser? He is not getting cold a superpower because Mark is flying shirtless and shoeless this far up in the atmosphere. And well, his nipple should be at attention and ready to cut some f***ing glass is all I'm saying. <laughs> no one hears this or even mentions the damage the next day. You're much better off if you relax that muscle from time to time. Use the momentum you're building to carry you forward. These flying lessons go on for all the some time. Couldn't this have just been a montage with a Survivor song playing over it? You know, you spend your whole life trying not to pee your pants. So, letting go, peeing your pants on purpose, it's next to impossible. It is not. Or, I mean, so I've heard. Are you questioning me? It seems like a pretty aggressive turn for Omni-Man to go from loving to abusive in like 20 minutes, but foreshadowing has to foreshadow, I guess. <laughs> Titan's superpower appears to be an easily defeated candy coating. Can't blame a guy for trying to move unsold merchandise. True, but you can call bullshit on this guy having an already tailored suit that fits Mark perfectly. Sorry about the art. How does no one in this neighborhood know that the Grayson house has superheroes? Omni-Man just takes off from the roof at any given time and Mark makes human-sized gopher holes in the backyard. I love my boring, powerless, everyday run-of-the-mill mom. And I love my asshole son. The Mother's Day conversation I had with my mom somehow makes it into this episode. Even if this ball could have found the perfect momentum to not escape orbit and somehow avoid any high terrain, at this speed it would have completely disintegrated from the friction. Also, this is an incredibly negligent game of catch. Everything else, aside from the fact that Omni-Man is encouraging this, makes his turn to villainy not so surprising. You actually are invincible. Roll commercials, or since I guess this is streaming, roll next thing the algorithm picks for you so you can't escape the sweet, sweet embrace of never-ending content. Flows right off the tongue, huh? Rolling the credits here is confusing. There's like a whole 10 minutes left, so is this a 37 minute long cold open or a 10 minute mid credit scene? Either way, I'm excited to see what the next 10 minutes hold so I can finish this thing off with all the good feelings completely intact. Denver is toast, Imato! Show never explains why a villain who thinks a biplane would provide the best thrust to weight ratio for a jetpack has such a serious vendetta against Denver. Aw oh, man, take me with you! Kids. No, Nikki. You know Guardian's business is too dangerous for human children. It's also dangerous to leave children hanging around abandoned buildings like this one. Does Green Ghost keep that pill in her pocket? That <laughs> seems like an item that is too important for a pocket designation. Darkwing. He may be the hero this city deserves, but he's not the mallard we want right now. This mountain looks remarkably similar to the one Invincible threw the baseball through. A little too similar. Well, this interesting turn of events is pretty cool, and I love this shot of Red Rush fighting so hard he breaks his own hands while punching Omni-Man. This all occurs in the last five minutes. The rest of this episode was pretty by the book, but not in a way that made these characters endearing enough for me to even lament their loss. Also, this last five minutes has more dismemberment than an entire Saw film. Might have to watch Spiral after this for a palate cleanser. Why? Why? Because modern television is addicted to cliffhangers, that's why. Joe contains a very important warning for anyone with photosensitivity, but forgets to include an additional warning about eating food while watching the show, and I'm still bitter about my baked potato turning sour in my mouth during the final minutes of episode one. Show informs us that the queen is not in residence, but never explores this further. What a tease. It's not about rooms. It's about power. That building has one purpose, to say I'm the queen and you are my subjects. But it also says, I'm the queen and need my staff available, so I'm going to make sure everyone's close and doesn't need to drive to work. But that doesn't sound quite as dramatic. Oh no, is that blood? Nah, show just wants to trick us into thinking that this is a continuation of the bloodbath we saw in the last episode. But instead, it's just trash from the Burger Mart. And we all know that fast food garbage is comprised of 25% meat, 25% food containers, and 50% ketchup. Tampering with evidence. Clear. No, you're solid now. You were clear a second ago, silly. The animators decided that if they were going to go through with all the trouble to draw a dismembered body, that it needed to be shown at least 64 times. We get it, they died horrifically. Sure, Spray acquires his corpse down with lube and attach the doodad to make us think Immortal might survive. Toy with my emotions and momentarily trick me into thinking the Guardians could be saved. I could handle it. Careful, don't bump her. Don't bump 
Her? She is dead, sir. Her head has been relocated on its axis. Bump her all you want, she doesn't give a fuck about bubs. Leaving a book on a stovetop. This coffee maker is running way too hot for a traditional drip machine. Either there's a wiring problem or Omniman is being a dick to Debbie's tongue. 50% of this shower is useless space. As the Global Defense Agency, we have access to medical technology far beyond any normal hospital. Exposition! Ah, that's one of our threat response teams. More exposition! We're not in the mood for the tour, Donald. Oh, thank you, Debbie. This big-ass screen is needed to monitor blood pressure and temperature. With just a little bit of attention to design economy, they could eliminate most of these other screens. That would probably cut the power usage of this room in half. We're a little understaffed in the hero department. Category is things that should have been said quietly but needed to be spoken loud enough for someone else to hear and move the story along. Stop! Get away from those pe Invincible brings these half-assed verbal commands to a firefight that is already in progress. Oh, Oh my god! Once you suffer a dislocated fracture, you never get used to seeing that sh And since I'm in the driver's seat, I'm sitting that sh I don't know who you are, but it's time to go. Well, now that a superhero said a one-liner of sorts, the winning can start. We gave people time to escape! That's what matters! You also redirected weapons fire from the civilians on the street to the ones in the building. So, really it's all about perspective. None of these people are paying attention to where they are walking. But these guys act like Mark is the ass for not yielding to them. F these guys. You and Debbie need a lasagna? I make a good one. Calling your friend's mom by her first name rather than Mrs. Grayson. Also, everyone thinks that their lasagna is the best, but everyone is always wrong about their lasagna. True lasagna has no ricotta cheese. I'm, um, invincible. God, that sounds dumb when I say it like that. Sounds a little optimistic, maybe. Mark would be excellent at TV since, but Eve knocked that one out of the park. I'm Adam Eve. You don't say. You are the superhero that looks exactly like a girl named Eve with hair and eyes the exact same? You don't say. You're the reason Todd beat him up again. Oh, yes. Blame her for existing. I never recognized you before. No one does. It's a psychology thing. If you don't expect to see a superhero in your school, you don't see a superhero in your school. I agree with this. Every time I think I see a celebrity on the street, I do a double take, stare for a minute, realize I've been staring too long, and have to pretend like I'm looking at birds or some sh**. And even after that, I'm unsure if I just saw a celebrity or not. However, I don't think this applies to super-powered individuals who use their abilities as indiscreetly as Adam Eve and Invincible do. Whether or not I expect to see a person fly away, I will definitely notice that when it happens. That's us, everyone's fourth favorite superhero team. <laughs> Wait, what? The number of superheroes on this show seems to be increasing exponentially. If there are that many superhero teams, I would start thinking it's very likely to see a superhero at your school. Now I have to retcon these sins. That's much better. You'll get used to it. The fights, not the barfing. So, to be clear, barfing is a thing that people will never get used to, whereas the fighting, dismemberment, murder, chaos, and death of innocents and baddies alike will seem very normal. She's evil. I'm calling it. Despite all the details that went into the articles themselves, the names of these publications are phoned in, and online news is the worst. Also, not one of these sources asked for permission to collect cookies. I ran off because, because they, they were dying of old age. Well, I will have to say I saw this romance coming from a mile away. From one giant show to another. Moko Maid's Twitch motto somehow makes its way into this episode. Damien Darkblood, Demon Detective. Show thinks I used up all my good Darkwing Duck material on the first episode, but plan A has, and always will be, this song. Three, two, one! Damien Darkblood, when there's trouble you call the double D. Damien Darkblood, let's get dangerous. Try to keep up. The most frustrating part of this training montage is that it completely avoids explaining how anyone's hair stays tangle-free despite whipping in the wind without being tied back. I once took a jeep ride with a soft top down. It took me three hours to comb out the tangles. And I have a buzz cut. Breakfast until 10.43 a.m.? Why not 10.45? Why not 10.30? I guess it doesn't matter because no matter when the cutoff starts, someone will pull up to the window 10 seconds too late and demand to have breakfast like an asshole. Follow me. Asking someone to do what they were already doing. The flaxons come from a dimension with a faster temporal rate. As a result, the tachyons they emit spin more rapidly than our own. Show expects me not to conflate spinning tachyons with the spinning DNA on this monitor, and I simply cannot allow that. Are you okay? Donald said you saved a lot of lives. Yeah, it was just, uh, harder than I thought. I'm glad Mrs. Grayson is checking in with her son, but wouldn't this have been a conversation she would have had earlier while comforting him in the midst of his blood-covered trauma? I'm not going to send Rex somehow being annoying during what I assume is his post-coital celebratory milk drinking, but I am going to send Rex for being one of those people that drink straight from the container. So, you can be more awesome than him and take his place. That's how dating works. It is not. 
over excessive pen clicking. Why aren't they getting old? In the previous fight, it took the aliens several minutes before showing signs of aging. And the teen team has shown up at the very beginning of their newest invasion. Be patient, kids. Sheesh. Teen Team starts the battle with the same unsuccessful tactics as they did in the last one. Duply Flip jumps about letting her copies get massacred, Sex Load throws his balls at people, Zachary Quinjet does his best Iron Man impersonation, and Pinky and the Lame makes use of her Swiss Army bubble yum. The only significant difference is that Intolerable discovers the power of boners. So they target the wristband, expertly, but what stopped them from being so precise with their previous attacks? Could she not pink spike through their brains? <laughs> Invincible is a dick to healthcare workers and the poor bleeding soul that needed this gauze. Hey, I need my costume back. I don't care how torn up it is. It's classified and I want it back. Go get it. Now. These intermittent bouts of unwarranted hostility raise questions. Like, maybe Nolan has a thyroid problem. Also, Viltra might privilege. Breathless Human has time for this. Wow. I get it. Taking the view while you can. But does... Does Mark not need to breathe anymore? Is that part of being invincible? Even on their third attempt, these aliens are still opening their portals across from each other, thereby funneling all their troops into one easily surrounded location. I'm no military scholar, but we all know it's not fun to keep using the same predictable positions. Also, the teen team never once attempts to exploit this. <sighs> Teens. Rex leaps from the vehicle here and can he fly? I don't think he can fly. Rex is dead and I demand to see the animation to confirm this. I'm sure he's explaining nicely why they should leave us alone. Show makes me cautiously rethink some of the things my mom has said to me over the years that I may have previously misinterpreted to mean my father was not systematically destroying a civilization. The juxtaposition of this scene against the one where Invincible fights Alan clearly establishes the differences between the two characters, not only in regard to physical ability, but also in the way of desire and motivation. It's a brilliant bit of storytelling done through action sequences and without exposition, but also genocide. I'm at a loss for how to report this, but the guardians of the globe are dead. For sake, did we need this eyebrow sh We already know he killed them. The show just spent two minutes showing us his ruthlessness. Just enjoy hugging your family, Nolan. Again with the sun. Show doesn't think it can open an episode without looking at the sky, and that's the second time this fetish has caused me eyeball pain. Writers include this, this, and this, just in case we confused it with Japan, Missouri. And we are left to wonder, who will save us now? I will. Vanity. Everyone has black umbrellas at a funeral. Cliche. Never get invited. Show up anyway. Justifying funeral crashing. I may have completely forgotten how to write in cursive, but I know most of these are just random squiggles. Shame on you, Dark Blood, pretending to take notes. Didn't mean to offend. Nuance of human conversation. Difficult for me. Well, Omni Man isn't human, so the nuance is moot. Robot! You know, for a bunch of computer code, you run a main superhero team. Are there no other robots in this world? Has this name never been an issue when robot just happens to be standing next to another robot? Or is robot a surname and Cecil is just one of those people? Also, that's robotist. This flower over here looks very similar to this flower over here. A little too similar. Hey, he could run fast, okay? It's not exactly one of your premier superpowers. Nolan is a dick to speedsters. I was thinking finals are coming up and we're both in Miss Walker's Global Issues class. Study dates. While I do believe these books do contain references to bio and math, I find it hard to accept that any publisher worth their salt would use titles this general. Hang on! I knew there was a reason you skipped the funeral! Just skipping a funeral to have sex with Duplicate. Wait, is that actually a sin? Hold on. What's that? Okay, so I was just informed that this is 100% without a doubt, no questions asked, a sin. Phew. I actually think this joke is pretty hilarious, but... Geometry. Despite your name, I believe you underestimate yourself, Invincible. But Mark said nothing about doubting himself. He said he couldn't join because his dad wanted to handle training him, and his mom didn't want him to miss any more school. And then the director said, have him bounce his pecs. It will make him look like even more of an apple. Wait, what? Somebody ought to teach you some mother f***ing what's up. Despite being surrounded by superpowered individuals, Rex Chode underestimates someone named Monster Girl. Come on, man, read the room. Also, Rex survives this. We find out Monster Girl is wary of transforming often, since every time she does, she gets a little younger. So why is she wasting a change on f***ing Rex Splode? Invincible hit that little girl! Show thinks that someone who just witnessed that fight between Rex and Monster Girl is really gonna try and cancel Invincible over this. I'm sure your junk is awesome. 
Even with the power dynamic reversed, this still feels wrong. Welcome to the Guardians of the Globe, Monster Girl, along with Rex Splode. What exactly is Rex Splode bringing to the table? You're telling me that out of the 20 or so superheroes that didn't make it, none of them were more qualified than Rex? Because I do not believe you. Rex cheated on me with Duplicate, all three of her. Whoa. Envy. Whoa. And now Lust. This show is full of a lot of actual sins, so I'm sure no one will complain about our video this time around. <sighs> as soon as the forensic investigation has concluded, we'll be moving into the Guardian's headquarters. Not a single one of these numbskulls thinks it might be a bad idea to set up shop at the scene of the former Guardian's unsolved murder. It's like they say, die a hero or live long enough to see yourself become an eco-villain. Go out the back way! Setting aside the little detail of the stairs leading directly to the front door, why is this even necessary? Unless Amber, for some reason, hates dating guys with friends, William's presence should have absolutely no impact on her perception of Mark. Well, then the whole concept of personal privacy or me time, pff, that's out the window. Facebook's user agreement. Doc Seismic isn't burned, seared, or lightly browned in any way, despite being incredibly close to lava. Also, there is no lava close to the surface of Mount Rushmore. Invincible completes this repair without a proper mortar mix. He doesn't even consider a bonding agent. That's just shoddy craftsmanship. Those aren't gloves. Gloves have fingers. They're more, uh, earthquake bracelets. While these are essentially bracelets, Invincible doesn't acknowledge the existence of fingerless gloves. Also, mocking this dangerous technology that has probably already killed several people. Also, also, taking time for these not-so-clever quips when the success of your date depends upon you dealing with this situation quickly and efficiently. I thought your doctorate was in seismology. Undergrad in sociology and women's studies. I had a minor in African dance. Holy woke villain, Darkwing. I mean, I don't know if I should f*** him or fight him. Random tourists randomly being put into random jeopardy are random. Show creates false tension by expecting us to believe that this man will die a horrible death. Joe also assumes I will care if this man dies a horrible death. And I do not. Wow, that guy is toast. Oh, I see. So, like, none of these sound good, huh? Pun shaming. You left a girl in your room while you flew off to deal with a crisis. Good. Yeah, because telling Amber you forgot you had something to do and you can meet up later so then she could go back home or wherever and accomplish other things and possibly hold on to some dignity would just be silly. One last piece of fatherly advice, okay? You might want to change. As should you, Nolan. I'm assuming both Mark and Debbie would have people that don't know Nolan is Omni-Man over to the house. So why would he ever be just wandering around the downstairs with his Omni-Man showing? I sold a house today that had a double homicide. I told them lightning never strikes twice. Technically, it did strike twice, just in rapid succession. Thursday, chicken pot pie. Getting this excited about chicken pot pie. Go ahead, rope me in with this cliffhanger reveal that Robot was actually behind the Mahler twin escape. Because otherwise, I had no intention whatsoever to watch any more episodes of this very entertaining take on the superhero genre. Escape from hell. Seek justice for others to save own soul. Show knows exactly what it feels like to quit your job in sales, blow all your money on developing a terrible student film, and ultimately end up writing for TV sins. Eh, maybe too soon in the series to make this call, but I don't care. Nolan furrows his brow cliche. The skip recap button. That's right, I'm sending the Amazon interface for allowing me to skip a part of the show that I've previously sinned. Sure, it looks all sexy and convenient, but it offloads the administration of this experience onto me. This is essentially the digital equivalent of the self-checkout lane at the supermarket. Stop trying to automate perfectly good jobs. Plus, my hands are currently occupied with stuffing artificially flavored cheesy popcorn into my face. And I'll not risk the sanctity and cleanliness of my remote by handling it while my hands are covered in what feels like a mixture of Elmer's glue and climbing chalk. Do we have to see the Immortals decapitation every damn time? And why am I still trying to eat Taco Bell while watching this show? I might have a problem. Show has Bryant mumble, step on this scorpion, throw a cigarette at this guy, and push past this crowd instead of just giving him an apple to prove how much of an asshole he is. Now I have to give this three sins instead of one. Also, murder. Discount John Ham. Only one snap and no shake? That's just blatant disregard to the established glow stick activation procedure. There is no way it would be this luminous. Oh my god! He's resurrecting a whore. What did Discount Sadipo think Discount Indiana Jones was up to? Nothing good comes from opening mummy tombs. There's an insane amount of examples in other shows and movies. You could have done some f***ing research is all I'm saying. My first thought was that this door fell into place by sheer luck. My second thought was that one of these guys just happened to be proactive enough to shut the door on this nightmare. My third thought was that Omni-Man threw this door into place as he and Invincible were flying by. Finally, my fourth thought was giving this moment a sin because I'm pretty sure five thoughts would have caused a Nexus event and frankly, I don't have time for that. Messing up the desert. Huh? <laughs> J.K. Simmons, man. J.K. F***ing Simmons. What happened to... Gain some altitude. 
messing up the desert. We're closer to the surface now than Invincible was when he was kicking up the sandstorms. Wait, where's Mount Everest? It's the high one. Dad directions. Take hey, deep breaths, buddy. The air's thin up here. Show's already established that Invincible's lungs are too strong for this to make any sense. In episode two, he held his breath during a lengthy flight in space, then a conversation in space, and then took time to stop and enjoy the view from space. Why would breathing be a concern here? Sometimes I forget how beautiful this planet can be. Too bad the human race is hell-bent on destroying it. Look, if I wanted Captain Planet, I'd watch, well, Captain Planet. This login screen has no forgot password link. Considering how much effort went into writing these articles in episode two, I was really surprised that the show went with this lorem ipsum nonsense. But judging by the glowing circle forming in my living room, reading that Latin text aloud may have been a bad choice. I'll deal with that later. Amber and Mark appear to be traveling in the same direction, despite the fact that Mark's legs are clearly angled at least 45 degrees to the direction of travel. They're called balls. Throwing a hard B on your balls? Slow hanging fruit. Maybe you came to finish the job you started with the Guardians. You're the demon, after all. That's demonist. If you threaten my family again. Cliché. Run the jewels are not soundtracking my daily activities in this scene. This very sophisticated device, used to make clones, runs on frozen hamburgers. We're cool, right? Don't know. Don't care. Skip! Alienating Adam Eve was the direct result of your lapse in judgment. Do not repeat it with Monster Girl. Since the show's been pretty well written so far, I'll presume this whole scene is a setup for something. That being said, this is gross. And even though Rex even explains why it's gross... What are you, crazy man? She looks like she's 14! That doesn't make the choice to put it in the show any less gross! Now that I'm a guardian, I can bang anyone I want. Using your position in the corporate ladder to gain sexual advantages. I like dealing with work stuff. Yeah, and I love that about you. Oh, please, you. don't give me that sh Marriage. Mark is not trying at all to conceal that secret identity, which makes his conversation later with Eve about telling Amber who he is all the more odd. What if Amber had forgotten to tell Mark something or opened the door right here or a neighbor was out walking their dog? I don't like Mark missing school. This is Debbie's worry? That Mark will miss school? Not that he'll be going to a planet humans have never set foot on, or that he'll be in space for the next two weeks where just about anything could happen? But yeah, missing an English exam. Real bummer. Sure, but it's not like dating Rex worked out. Mark survives this. You help me with my Amber stuff, I'll help you with your Rex stuff. How exactly would Mark help Eve with her Rex stuff? Can he go back in time and stop Rex from being a cheating asshole? I don't think he can. I figured you need something. That's a nice gesture from Mark, but where did he get the $800 that turned him off from buying the ball in the first place? I'm I'm going away and helping people. This works. First off, just look how f***ing cool this space shuttle is. Second, look at how aerodynamically unsound these rocket boosters are. I may not have the time or education to properly calculate drag coefficients, but I assume rectangular cuboids have either lots of drags or lots of coefficients. Stay out of sight unless something goes wrong. I'm a ghost. Even as a ghost, the people inside can probably hear you tap dancing across the outside of their ship. What, there are Martians? Where do you think Martian Man came from, Jupiter? Cecil would be invincible at TV Sins. Martians? Way to bury the lead, Cecil. Actually, the lead is make sure our astronauts get home safe. Technically, Cecil still buried the lead. He didn't mention this till after the Martian talk. I know you're all tired of me preaching about Kessler Syndrome, but when you're done playing with your villains, you can't just leave them floating in orbit. It's a disaster waiting to happen. As I noted earlier, Mark has already been to space once, but didn't take note of the temperature or think that maybe sandwiches don't work in the vacuum of space. They land the ship for a second and hop straight the f out. This is Mars, not a rest stop. Don't you have to check with Fido first or some sh**? This extra is staring right at the camera. No landing. Do you trust me, Debbie? Considering the convenience of this dragon popping up literally right behind them while they're in another country, if I were Debbie, I'd be thinking Nolan set these shenanigans up. So the answer is no, Debbie. It's f***ing no, I don't trust you, Nolan. I guess the good thing for Dark Blood is no one will ever ask him to be on plant watering duty while they're out of town. Other humans in white, are they like you? Aliens conveniently speak English cliche. Alone, the group mind is scattered and weak, but with an appropriate host, they become unified and unstoppable. Snyder Bros. How exactly is Mark protecting the astronauts? He's giving them zero cover. He should at least be running behind them. Ah. Uh. Oh, hey, you're back early. Invincible doesn't even need his key to open this door, which is surprising when you consider how paranoid Nolan was when Cecil showed up earlier. 
But more importantly, Nolan and Debbie deserve a sin for going to pound town with the front door unlocked when you know you have a teenage son who could just come home at any moment. But more importantly, the last time we saw these two, Nolan pretty much refused to save people from a fire-breathing dragon. And apparently Debbie was super turned on by this. This is a sin because I used to like you, Debbie. See? That's the problem with demons. You only see good and evil. Black and white. No, the problem with demons is they never pick up their toys. Oh wait, that's kids. Same difference. Finally. Phase one begins. But what the f happened to the mummy from the beginning of the episode? Slow zoom into a waking cityscape. The streets are ready for action. I've got a good feeling this is going to be a really awesome episode of Law and Order. Was that a yawn? Usually I yawn after I see someone else do it, but this is a half-assed attempt to make me feel the weight of this man's workday. Maybe this is foreshadowing how I may feel after sitting this episode. Wearing sunglasses at night while smoking a cigarette in a tank top. So you can, so you can look like even more of an asshole from the 80s. Neither one of these guys pulls the gun up and out in any perceivable way. So as far as I can tell, they've pulled the gun sideways through the seam of their pants. I do not expect this trend to catch on. Consciously courteous concrete criminal is a casual coffee cup conservationist. In a world of superpowered beings, you choose to observe the shadowy cafe crusader instead of shooting him on sight before he goes rock hard for your base. He didn't even bring you a coffee after stopping to get himself one. That's enough merit to blow away this discount Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Concreting your head last instead of first. This guy's not killed instantly after being hit with a forklift. Instead, he and it skid across the ground and are pinned up against some racks that should have also been killed in this event. I'm guessing the forklift was paying more attention in its drama class than in physics. Bringing in the big guns, huh? You sure about that? Titan's been beating humans with other humans, and you think bringing a bigger pew pew will do the job? Size, in this case, doesn't matter. Titan's lack of resourcefulness is playing a big part in time spent dealing with these goons. He's been disarming these guys for what seems like 15 minutes, yet hasn't picked up a gun to shoot back at them. He could have had enough time to enjoy a post-beatdown vanilla bean latte before heading home, if he wasn't taking his superpower for granted. Thinking that screaming while firing your weapon makes it more effective. Ha! The f Ah, good. Stab the rock man in the chest, who has been deflecting bullets during the entire raid. What's next? Eating soup with a fork? Yo, roll that back. Why are these buttons on this phone during playback? Since when do you need a record button while you're watching your footage? And under what circumstances would I need to select the front-facing camera? I'm just trying to watch my latest TikTok phone. Leave me alone. You went all the way across town to get cheesecake. Yep. To make up for being late because you went across town to get cheesecake. I was initially confused as to why he didn't have two cheesecakes. And then I realized that Amber and Mark just choose to communicate in the most bizarre way possible. However, now I'm just upset that I don't have two cheesecakes. So I'm going to give them three cents. How his pants aren't on fire is beyond me. But since he always removes his shirt, I'm a little confused about the blatant disregard for pants. Don't tell me the rock's being shy about his stalactite. Or possibly stalagmite, depending on the situation. What did we ever do to you? Kevin, my man, Titan just lit your entire apartment complex ablaze as you watched. I think the better question is why you didn't immediately call 911 when Titan started to commit arson after yeeting the cat villain. I'm guessing that Invincible's more of a dog person. Here I am throwing all my good boots out, trying to silence the cat cophony of alley cats next to my home when I should be digging out my Superman Halloween costume from 2012 and chucking the cats through a wall. This show has made it clear. I must dismantle the invasion of the third meow led by the fur -er. You've been late 12 times in the past three months. I'm sorry, but I'm docking your shifts. Does he mean docking his pay? Because technically speaking, it sounds like Mark is already docking his shifts on his own. Grayson? Grayson? Getting batman in a non-DC property. Uh, Principal Winslow. Taking Family Matters name in vain without going full crossover episode. Your lives worth minimum wage. Or do you want to fire your guns in the air so you tried your best and we all walk away happy? And alive. I can understand the confusion this caused because even though they're indoors, air is still all around them. But it's still weird that the writers didn't have at least one of these guards consider the inevitable investigation where they're going to have to explain why they all shot at the ceiling instead of the perpetrator. You're a walking pile of rocks. That's Roxist. I know where your family lives, and that means you work for me until I say you're f***ing done. This excessive usage of auto-tune. Sure, when it's tastefully done, it adds a futuristic vibe that can supplement your overall aesthetic, but none of that even rhymed. T-Pain is on the phone. He wants you off the mixtape. Plus, now you gotta pay for the desk, too. This was imported Italian maple. Huh. Nave. If you had any inkling of exquisite taste in the fine fashions of woodworking chattels, you'd be aware that the African Blackwood would complement this office space better.
Invincible's ability to breathe at varying altitudes remains frustratingly confusing. In Episode 4, I had to address the strangeness of him having trouble breathing on Mount Everest, when in Episode 2, he had no trouble holding his breath for long periods in space. And now, in Episode 5, I have to address the fact that he appears to be breathing at all while hanging out somewhere near the Carmen line, when in Episode 4, he was having trouble breathing on Mount Everest. How's it feel to save the world? <sighs> Why not break the meteor into tiny pieces with your super strength? You sent a meteor hurling into deep space at such a velocity that it would decimate any planet in its trajectory for a date with a girl that doesn't even like your diversified cheesecakes. I'm not sure you're earning the hero part of superhero. <sighs> Nobody awoke to their house being blown apart? My dog would have lost his shit hearing Invincible outside of his home. Never mind getting a portion of your garage blown away. Not to mention the lights are on, so people are awake. Did somebody ask for butterscotch ripple? The show's already spent a considerable amount of time showing us that Titan isn't all that bad. So much so that the suggestion of him about to attack a child feels so out of character that this ice cream turn isn't the least bit surprising. Also, pretending that butterscotch is a child's favorite ice cream flavor. Forcing elephants back into captivity. He calls himself. I'll admit this title card's funny every time, but at 15 minutes in, it'd be funnier if you just continued on with this momentum that the story's created. And by funnier, I just mean better. Facebook. Also, artists thought that just because Darkblood was a demon, he'd be committed to the whole evil notebook of the dead aesthetic, when he was clearly throwing a more hip moleskin vibe. What was the name of that place in Bordeaux, the one with the chocolate pastry thingies? Show dangles this delicious sounding pastry thread in front of us, but doesn't follow it a single bit further. Leaving notes without context. So when you go back to do further research, you cannot for the life of you remember why you wrote down Cubits, Amuse Bouche, and Donnie Benet. All guys make mistakes. Using your man card to justify the betrayal of trust. I tried using that statement once when I super glued my finger in my belly button. The outcome was the same. You just look like an idiot. You're an 18 year old girl. You can't do this hero bullshit on your own. Parents. I can rearrange atoms on a molecular level like it's easy. Wait. I thought all she could do was weird pink energy things. I had no idea she could put doors in weird places. Where was that during the interdimensional alien invasion? Also, conjuring a door mid-wall and without consent. You know, I'm more like a big picture superhero. Pretending that you're as important and relevant as a Marvel or DC hero. You do know you're on Amazon, right? This is some bullshit. Letting your pride get in the way of experiencing flight. Maybe bullshit to you, Titan, but somewhere out there is a kid dreaming of being ferried to the bad places of the city by their favorite superhero. <laughs> Machine Head owns the trash company, uses it to ferry drugs to stash houses all over the city. Using the trash bins is clever, but garbage trucks have to be the most impractical truck for this job. For one, you don't put trash cans inside them because there's all that compactor tech in there. And two, even if you did manage to cram one or two trash cans in there, good luck getting them out without attracting attention to what should be a covert operation. Just saying Machine Head seems like he'd be smarter than this. Even though people use it generically, Popsicle's a trademarked name. You wouldn't see a Kleenex palace, would you? Although, really might be handy to have one next to the Popsicle palace now that I think about it. I know I can take Machine Head. He's just a criminal with a special head. Having a special head is often a sign of huge problems for a superhero. Modoc, Brainiac, Juggernaut. Doesn't he read comic books? Putting mashed potatoes right on top of your already separated food. You fought off an alien invasion, saved the country from an asteroid. This is beneath you. Viltramite classism. That's the last time the Lizard League turns people into snakes in my town. The Lizard League? Missed opportunity for the name Snake Society or Serpent Squad. Why did the Lizard League choose to turn people into snakes instead of lizards? Sure, they're both reptiles, but everyone knows that lizard people are far superior to snake people. It's like Viltramite classes in 101. People so caught up in your own little prize fights that you let this entire bus of civilians crash. <laughs> Liar. Monster Girl's fighting, but Rex looks like he's taking a long happy second to observe the menu of a burger mart down the road or that he just enjoys hearing the sound of screeching tires and children on fire. As usual, I'll be the only person who actually sacrificed something, since I'm now a week younger than I was yesterday. Kids. He's only been a hero for a few months. He thinks he knows everything. I just don't want him to make a choice he'll regret. Like sloppy slaughtering an entire superhero team without doing much to cover your painful barefoot Lego trail of evidence? Like that regret? You want to come tonight? We could use the help. Mm, I wish I could, but too busy saving the world. Well done, Amber. You've accidentally put two and two together about Eve's superhero career. But how are you still oblivious to Mark's? He's been coming more in and out of your life than my dad has in mine. Just don't let Mark go get milk. Hi, I'd like to schedule a therapy appointment. I almost forgot how good I look. Button press, buff blue man reveal, technology, electricity, excitement? 
Three-point landing cliche. Debbie's calculations show 12 minutes of travel time while she sets a timer for 20 minutes. I can look past this discrepancy as a possible estimate to account for wait times at each stop, but there are so many unknown variables here, such as Nolan's flight speeds, and just how long is he willing to wait at these shops? He doesn't seem to be a very patient man. So the fact that the timer goes off exactly when he gets back makes this whole scene a conveniently contrived pile of this works. Nolan put his murder suit on this weird shelf above the window instead of sinking into the bottom of the ocean, tossing it into an active volcano, or just throwing it straight into the sun. Now, even on the off chance he planted it here on purpose, I'm still giving this a sin because throwing it into the sun wasn't plan A. Oh yeah, these guys know what's up. It doesn't matter how good you are at security as much as how cool you look doing it. No way you saw this car. I mean, I did. Not because I'm watching you do it now, Titan, but because this building was foreshadowed four times. In the industry, we call this foreshadowing. It's not quite as wasteful as doing four score shadowing, but still a bit much. Which is how I know it's not worth explaining to you two morons what quantum probabilities are. Well, Machine Head is right, simply because that would take a lot of time, and it's not like they're paying him for this lecture, so he'd only have an incentive to do this if he was the type of person that derived value from sharing his wisdom with others. Clearly he is not. That being said, his statement about probability evokes an alarming amount of certainty. So much so that I'm wondering if someone needs to explain to him what quantum probabilities are. Mixing food with one hand. You look like you're good at chopping things. How'd you know? Cause she's a super- Ah, oh, never mind. Wait, Invincible is bloodied? When did that happen? He gets covered in lava and electricity, then smashed into a wall and a floor, then uppercut by Big the Cat with a mace, and then this? <laughs> is where you want to show damage on him. It's almost like you want him to be impervious until the plot needs him to bleed. Whatever the case, the show's name from this point should now be Occasionally Vincible. Who's next? Not reading the room. Not reading your texts. Wait, wait, I'm getting something here. What? Not using the already blown out door for maximum property damage. Cecil got an anonymous call. Samson feels the need to deliver this information, which is pretty much like the paramedic showing up to your car crash, finding you bleeding out, and pausing to explain that someone called them. And had that not happened, they wouldn't be there. Murder these assholes! Taco Bell's new slogan somehow makes it into the episode. Not to tell Machine Head how to spend his own money, but he could have just had Isotope teleport Battle Beast here instead of wasting his money on the rest of these goons. Take it from Confucius, Machine Head. He who will not economize will have to agonize. <laughs> this fight was so good, I'm not even going to call it a discount Thanos versus Hulk. In fact, this fight is so good, Marvel should take notes. This fight is so good, I'm taking a sin away and adding it to the next Marvel show in spite. I'm going to make this city better for a lot of people. But some people come first. Inviting your family to a bloodied, battle-ridden office doesn't seem like the best parental choice to preserve child innocence. Just look up, honey. Just look up. Having the secret lab be accessible from the main elevator not only creates opportunities for these awkward interactions, it also increases the likelihood that an individual like myself could hack their way into the lab not with skill but with immature button mashing. I'm like an expert button masher. Watch. Uh, oh. Oh, um, Cinny, can you fix that? Thanks. I need my costume back, and I want it back. Am I important to you? I'm gonna do better. I'm not even sure I want to do this anymore. Clone. I need your expertise. I'm here for you. I thought Mark would be here tonight. Every one of these assholes in the previously on being all me, 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 me. Maybe if you didn't lose your powers. Except Rex. These assholes! And Battle Beast. Using three types of pen colors for your investigation when one black pen and colored highlighters are an option. Also, the red ink is under the black ink, meaning the circles came before the word blood, which is just a dumb way to take notes. This uninspired yet framed original artwork. What's important? Going full Rick Sanchez. You never go full Rick Sanchez. You're going to be in... What started out as a cute title card gag has now morphed into an anxiety-inducing slap bet. Even in the real world, my heart rate increases every time someone says... Keep an eye on that thing. An eye? Keep an eye on a gushing wound? How about pressure? How about keeping pressure? There you go. Find out what kind of blood she can take. Show wants me to believe that with all the preparation Cecil's making for an eventual showdown with Omni-Man, that he's completely overlooked the medical needs of the security guardians of the globe. How are they even operating on him right now? Even if they have some sort of special Viltrumite surgical tools, this does raise the question, is he or is he not? 
Thank God whatever tore him up was sharp. I'm sure the reason for this statement has something to do with making it harder to put all the bits back together, but since all my experience with the case of Sharp v. Dull has to do with kitchen knives, it feels like the doctor's worried about the quality of his fillet. Six days? How is Mark popping up off the table like a doorbell just ringing his pizzas here? He just had a hole through his abdomen a few days ago. Don't say he heals super fast. He's still got bruises on his face, so his stomach must still be healing. What's more interesting to me is why he would do it. So much of what's going on here between Cecil and Nolan is bubbling right under the surface. We know these two characters are hiding the most secrets and that both are trying to game each other. That hostile dynamic turns this seemingly simple conversation into a battle of wits and I'm loving every second of it. Start over. Treating a relationship like a video game. I'm just trying to start over with Amber, you know? I understand the goal, but I do not understand the method. You want to show her you're serious by blocking your best friend on a visit to a college you know little to nothing about. Show highlights the fact that it is constantly overshadowing the butt. If you can create and disappear doors at will, do you really need to pack? Ever? Why not manifest a new outfit each day from some pine cones, instead of lugging around all this luggage? A normal life! A house! A husband! Kids. I see your kids, and raise you in overprotective parents with outdated expectations. When you need to fly to another country, you don't flap your arms. Flappy arm shaming. Dramatic much? I'm sorry. I'm not. You're being a jerk. He was being both dramatic and a jerk, but he was also making an argument, summarizing a conceptual framework for addressing the limitations of human longevity. So instead of just calling him an asshole, you could have responded with a counter argument, highlighting why you think replacing hearts with carburetors is a bad thing. In the end, this sin comes down to Amber being a dick to constructive academic debate. Being this captivated by a water fountain. I'm serious. I think this is what I want. Mark says this after completing a series of activities all in the quad. I mean, at least go vet the cafeteria. Don't blame me when you get to your first lunch and realize the only choices are a compressed chicken patty, a melon-based fruit cup, and a giant milk machine that likely never gets cleaned. You know, when you start a sentence with I think, you automatically murder 90% of any romance in it. And when you overexplain Mark's crimes against passion, you murder the last 10%. In this shot, we see Amber and Mark are up close and personal with what's left of Funny Doug. Then in this shot, after they've taken a step back, new bystanders have found their way between our guys and Discount Robocop. Meaning that these two ran into harm's way just so they could fall down running out of harm's way. Save them if you want, but some people are already lost. Where the hell did you go? The tension created by the whole Mark's double life causing relationship problems feels so forced. While it's not entirely unbelievable, it is unbelievably frustrating. You said you wanted to start over. Oh, this is definitely getting a signal in the middle of the f forest. Those are normal levels for Monster Girl. She has a curse, not a disease. Robot is still slow dripping these medically necessary details instead of just giving them a full report. And this doctor is still treating Monster Girl's injuries as if she's a normal person. Why isn't Cecil giving him the full report? So I take it we won? When you have a character whose only facial expression is an awkward smile, you're bound to have some strange moments. Did the creators really think Tom Hanks would be okay with these dead eyes? Nolan struck first. Is he analyzing everyone else's costume to confirm this? This entire sequence of analyzing fabric is fabricating facts for the sake of sewing the plot together. I feel gross. I'm taking a shower. You feel gross, so you're taking a shower at the college dorm to feel... cleaner? Improper placement of an exit sign. Feel better than ever. Almost like before I lost my powers. Maybe I should get my ass kicked more often. Then rejoin the team at Guardians HQ. When your powers have mysteriously, miraculously, and obviously returned, but the show doesn't want to talk about that right now. <sighs> Going ankle deep into sewer water to save someone you f***ed one time behind a boathouse. Also, why not call your buddy before you descend into the stinky pits of human waste? Or shoot a quick text, perhaps? Going low, bro. Smells like butt. Not the good kind, lol. Is anyone concerned that the people at this party are totally frozen in place? Is there another bad guy lurking in the shadows? Why has no one moved? Can't be lazy animation. It can't. It's funny how quickly things can fall apart. One day, it seems like you have all the time in the world, and then the next, it's gone. For the love of John Mayer, Nolan, just say what you need to say. Show is really playing hard to get to the bottom of Nolan's subterfuge. I, I can't hear you. I'll see you back at Rick's dorm. William is clearly terrified and running for his life, and Mark thinks, I'll see you back at Rick's dorm is an appropriate response. I know the power of boners is strong with this one, but the show is straight up making it seem like he's willing to let William die here. Hole does not contain glory. Waking up after an emotional argument with your eye wings still on fleek. So in the previous episode, Nolan punched this wall in a display of anger. But does punching a wall in anger give you any kind of emotional release when you can also punch through asteroids? This has to be like you or I punching through toilet paper, right? Here we see Adam Eve using her powers to make coffee, including manually boiling the water. 
Look, I still don't fully understand what her powers are, and no, I'm not going to research them, you nerd. But can she not just rearrange the atoms of the air itself to create a steaming cup of morning go juice instead of going through all these steps? Why does she even need go juice? Coffee brand coffee. Fork. You need to trust me. She does not. Debbie has confronted Nolan with proof that he murdered the Guardians. So does he really expect her to trust him that this was all for the greater good just because that's what obedient, well-behaved wives are supposed to do? Also, this show's beginning to soap opera so hard that I'm having flashbacks to my grandmother yelling, Don't you dare trust him! at the TV screen while stress-eating Werther's originals. We'll talk later. Nolan is addicted to Debbie, two ceilings, a floor, and a roof. Hey! Mark, it's Mom. Listen to me. I'm not around. People that do this with their voicemail. Come on, this is dumb. Yes, diverting our attention away from the main story to give us more of this will-they-won't-they they relationship B-plot is dumb. This is why I'm always late or why I don't show. Forget interrogation or torture, the power of boners is apparently all it takes for a superhero to reveal their identity. Then why are we fighting? We're fighting because you lied to me. You made me feel stupid and unimportant. It's a secret identity. Mark would be... <laughs> that TV sins. So much for welcome back. Congrats for not dying. Premature being an ungrateful brat, or whatever the opposite of celebration is. Indoor fireworks. If the flying pieces of superheated plastic don't get you, the unannounced PTSD-inducing explosion sure will. That's a guarantee. We're the guardians of the globe, baby. If we can die at any time, uh, we can drink at any time. This logic's not exclusive to the guardians. Anything that's alive can die at any time, and anything that's alive can drink at any time. Assuming it has a mouth, a digestive system, and is of legal age to drink iced tea. No, just give the show a sin for acting like Rex was capable of making a good point. But I'm lactose intolerant. Whoa, hold on. Do you know me at all? I filled them with beer. I know Rex is all kinds of unhinged, but this beer situation must be addressed. I don't care how well he cleaned these gardens, and we all know he didn't, there's still gonna be an unsettling amount of milk switching around that beer. Why are you never this industrious when it involves training? The manager at every job I've ever had. <clears throat> I mean, except this one, of course. Can I refill your coffee, Mr. Sinny? I swear to God, he had his head on the bench and he was just standing over it, prying it open with a Phillips head screwdriver. Oh, come on. No one's using a Phillips head screwdriver to pry open a complex piece of machinery like robot's head. You'd obviously use a flathead for that. There. I am alone and helpless. Despite two thirds of the Blue Man group acknowledging this is likely bullshit. They'll take Baby Robo at his word, which results in them being swindled. Gotta love villains who are exactly as dumb or as smart as the plot needs them to be. Sorry, love and sin are listed in the TV Sin's thesaurus as synonyms. I'm a terrible friend and a worse boyfriend because I'm- Ah! Quick! Do the thing! You're like a bad guy in a samurai movie who gets cut in half but thinks they're fine until they're like, Oh my god, my top half sliding away from my bottom half. One cheeseburger was harmed in the making of this simile. Also, putting the cheese on the bottom bun instead of the top of the burger like a society-hating sociopath. Also, also filling up on the cheese and bun half of your bifurcated burger instead of making sure you have room for the heart attack and bun half. Also, 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 what kind of monster goes to the effort of setting out their ketchup, burger, and fries only to leave before eating a single bite of it? Are there any heroes left in this world? Velma Dinkley doesn't have a bigger part in this episode. <laughs> some text up here on this monitor. I don't know whether to add a sin for laziness or remove a sin for ballsiness. Nah, I'm lying. I know exactly what to do. There's only one person I know who might be able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Omni-Man and come out on top, Debbie. Why would Cecil think that Debbie is the best way to get to Adam Eve? Wouldn't it be better to just... Where's Mark, Debbie? No, f*** you. Robert Kirkman continues his crusade against 20th century innovators by using flathead screws to do the hard work of keeping Rudy's skull in place instead of the far more useful crosshead screws invented by Mr. Henry F. Phillips. This procedure doesn't transfer you to the new body. It creates a copy of your mind. Let's just file that under things Rudy should definitely know already, but thank you for the clone's position. Of course, his brain's abnormal. You didn't think of that? Look at it! Couple of things here. One, they only just found out this is what Robot actually looks like, so how could he have planned for that? And two, you are literally his clone, so why didn't you think of that too? His motor cortex is the size of a pea. Same for his occipital and parietal lobes. They've all been eaten alive by his oversized cerebrum. While writing this in, I learned that the cerebral cortex is the outermost layer of the cerebrum and houses the four major lobes. Frontal, parietal, occipital, and temporal. 
So either thing one's description of what's happened to robot's brain is not quite accurate or brain surgery is way more complicated than I think it is and I should probably put this scalpel down. Compensating now. Which apparently is as easy as twiddling two wires together. I mean, this repair job would have been less ridiculous if he'd attempted a simple percussive adjustment. The laughable idea that a progress bar wouldn't quickly go to 98% giving the illusion that it's almost finished, but then take an hour to reach climax after four or five attempts and at least one reboot. Electricity, screaming, fire, excitement? I'm sorry it wasn't you. I think I understand the sentiment, but what a bizarre thing to be sorry about. In all the ways that matter, he is him. I mean, other than now occupying the body of a younger version of a hero who he didn't consult or receive consent from before cloning, but we've got the rest of the season to explore. There's only one episode left? And they're just pulling this shit now? And now that our deal is complete, it's time you both return to prison. If Rudy intends on taking them both to prison, why did he bother handing over the schematics to the collar? Of course, the answer is that the writers needed the roided Smurfs to have the collar so they can bring back the immortal. Apparently the show was three minutes short on runtime and way underspent on their animated blood budget. Rudy is a genius, but apparently that genius only extends to making slightly bigger robots. Judging by Mark's choice of dartboard placement, a disregard for human life must run in the family. He's not dead. Even after evacuating the neighborhood, we had to keep the yield down. Best it'll do is knock him on his ass for an hour or two. Holy shit, Cecil just wasted a lot of people's lives. Evacuating the neighborhood ahead of time means he was always planning to have Donald blow that place, so what was the point of sending the soldiers into the house at all? If he knew that even this explosion wasn't going to do the job, what chance did they have? Texting and flying. So I'm helping you today. Seeing all of this going on in the world, but deciding to help Mark with his girl problems. Perhaps after all this time, poor AIM is actually a clone thing, not just a stormtrooper thing. Advantage to being a clone. <laughs> We always know what the other one is thinking. Confusing cloning with telepathy. I'd argue even the slightest variation in life experience would have an effect on one's thoughts to the extent that the longer each clone was alive, the less likely they'd be to be able to know what the other is thinking. But I'm not a doctor, so I'm gonna send this for being a finishing each other's sentences cliche. Where's Mark, William? Uh, Amber dumped him and he didn't like my advice, so he went to go find Eve. Bullshit! Does he know that? It ended up being true, but Mark stormed off without mentioning a thing about where he was going. If you're gonna be labeled a snitch, at least be a factually accurate snitch. How do we know you're telling the truth? Ask me something only robot would know. Despite the sound logic of this idea, they forego any meaningful question and answer segment, making us all wonder why it was even brought up in the first place. How the f do you look like me? That is a much longer story, one that can wait. It's actually a very short story. While in the body of a robot, 30-year-old Rudy developed feelings for a 24-year-old monster girl, despite her being in the body of a 10-year-old. He exploited her attraction to Rex by cloning his body and transferring his consciousness into it so that she'd fall in love with him and they live a life of sciencing shit together. Look, I said it was short, not that it wasn't super f***ing creepy. Can't you use your teleporter to bring Mark and Eve back here? You need to be wearing one of these. But it could have rescued poor f***ing Donald, right? You wouldn't dare. Breaking the fourth wall. Not even Omni-Man shall stop our sin rays. <laughs> <clears throat> Sorry. But seriously, why is Omni-Man making out like this laser beam is such a big deal when he seems to have no issues Rick on starking his way through it so he can blow up the source? A literal murder of crows. $400 billion for the world's most expensive nosebleed. Tony Montana, 1984. So you lied to us about who you really were, freed the Maulers from prison, stole Rex's DNA, conspired with criminals to grow yourself a new body, and you expect us all to be like, oh sure, who wouldn't? Well yeah, when you say it like that, it sounds pretty ridiculous. However, let's not forget that the person pointing out said ridiculous situation was written by the same person who created said ridiculous situation to begin with. The world was fine before I came along. It'll be fine without my help. Better, probably. I'm sure it's likely a deliberate juxtaposition, but the Mark is moody and miserable about being a teenage superhero B-plot really undercuts the fun of the Catch Omni-Man A-plot. And now many minutes of Omni-Man being pummeled by mindless robots who can't possibly hurt him. Yes, I'm both asking to get back to the Omni-Man action and sinning the Omni-Man action. Welcome to TV Sins. <laughs> Further proof that every universe needs an Edna mode. This creature's impressive, but it can't even fly. So here's a sin for all the other possible routes Omni-Man could and should have taken to get past it. That should buy us five minutes or so. I mean, you could have easily doubled that if you made your move as soon as the zombie robot soldier started attacking, instead of sitting back and enjoying the show. Teleport me to Invincible's location. Cancer. Hail Mary was so big she'd burn off the teleport. Teleporters? More like teleplotters, am I right? See, because they only work when the plot needs them to. Oh, I'll move on. 
get to Guardians HQ. What? Cecil! Listen to me and do what I say. Or you could f***ing tell her that Omni-Man murdered everyone instead of playing the situational equivalent of the pronoun game with her. Also, why is using Adam Eve and the new Guardians to take down Omni-Man the backup to the backup to the backup plan instead of being the actual plan? If this creature does take out Omni-Man, what the f*** do they call to take it out? Omni-Man! Yay, a fight between a being we have no reason to believe is even remotely killable and another being who is literally called the Immortal and who we have already seen die horribly and return to life. Who needs stakes to keep the audience invested when you have two men punching each other really hard? Me. I do. We need to talk. Roll commercials. Holy sh**, that actually worked this time. It feels like this previously on was cut together by someone who's never watched the show. We have Debbie mad at Omni-Man, Omni-Man mad at the house, Cecil looking for Mark, Amber mad at Mark, ooh, Eve's here, Rudy's new body, Cecil mad at Omni-Man, Debbie looking for Mark, the Immortal looking for Omni-Man, and finishing with Mark looking as confused as we are after that barrage of clips, most of which are about as orienting as a big arrow saying, you are here on a slightly bloody but otherwise blank sheet of paper. The Immortal survives this, which I know is rather redundant, but I only highlight it because he really should be called the Humpty Dumpty. As in, he only seems to be immortal after somebody bothers to put him back together again. Mark, we need to talk. Roll the previous episode's commercials? Someone's controlling you! It's me, Mark. It's just me. Believing someone that you think is being mind-controlled when they tell you this. It's time for you to know where I really come from. And roll this week's commercials. My goodness, we're just a hop skip and a would-be invincible at TV sends away from a full deck and we haven't even hit the title card yet. I am from Viltrum. But it's not the planet I've told you about. Looks like today's conductor on the exposition train will be Nolan Grayson. The next stop is the planet Filtrum. We have created a perfect civilization. I'd say the compulsory white leotards tell a different story. The perfect civilization would have more than one fashion designer. In order for our people to reach their full potential, we had to remove the weak from our society. Wouldn't an advanced species know that physical prowess is just one facet while measuring the overall strength of a society? What about the architects who dream the buildings into existence? The philosophers who ponder the meaning of life through their tales? Or the scientists who, holy sh**, did you see that person get cut in half? That <laughs> was awesome. When it was over, our population was cut in half. But what emerged from the ashes was unstoppable. Since most of the battling we see on screen looks like a bunch of people taking cheap shots at each other when they're not looking, it seems like being weak just means you don't have a spidey sense. Problem is, we have no idea how this so-called process of random assassination would ever stop. Wouldn't it keep going until there's just one Highlander left? We needed a better, more efficient way to conquer worlds. I mean, robots, right? The self-replicating ones that expand exponentially would sure do the trick. Of course, that's gonna be a lot harder now that you've killed all the nerds, isn't it? Our most trusted officers were each given a planet to weaken by themselves. Over the course of 20 f***ing years? Even on his own, I'm sure Omni-Man could have conquered Earth in six months max. What's he been doing? I can maybe understand if he spent that time convincing Earth's governments that Viltrumite rule was in their best interest, but it never even comes up. 20 years of superheroing and father figuring and for what? We need to get Earth ready to join the Viltrum Empire. But why? To paraphrase a certain captain of the Enterprise, what does God need with a human? Viltrumite DNA is so pure you're nearly full-blooded. Is nearly full-blooded really going to be enough for a species that thanos half of its actually full-blooded population for being too weak? But we can help them. We can stop wars, eliminate hunger. Omni-Man's burden. I do love your mother, but she's more like a, a pet to me. Show's dropped enough hints at Nolan and Debbie doing the horizontal mambo, the biggest being Mark, that I'm now hoping Nolan just never learned the proper use of the word pet. What do you think is gonna happen? That I'm gonna go enslave my friends for a bunch of aliens I've never met? Built for my kids. Being able to give this much side eye without ever turning your head. I truly hope Mark lives up to his name. He's gonna say it, isn't he? To face his father and survive? A lot of build up on this one, huh? He'll need to be. Wait, what? What is this? Okay, that's just me having a bit of fun. I mean, if you're gonna be that predictable, you really leave me no choice but to make my own fun. Everyone in this group apparently attended classes at the Chicago campus of the Rickon Stark School of Running Away From Things. Calculating the relative weights of Abraham Lincoln's head, an asteroid flying through space, and this falling building is an amount of math that is very much above my pay grade. That being said, this show is doing an insufficient job of helping us understand how heavy anything is for these powered individuals. So even though this building may actually be heavy for Invincible, we have no way to tell if that makes sense or is just what the story needed at the moment. Ironically, we missed this in a previous episode, but as one of our great communicators once said, Fool me once, shame on... 
shame on you. Fool me. A fooled man can't get fooled again. So the sin, as always, is a nihilist. That was your fault. Your stubbornness against the inevitable killed those people. Confusing stubbornness with Newton's laws of motion. How can you say those things? I suppose we're meant to believe Cecil's getting this footage from the little flying ball things they introduced earlier. So here's a sin for convenient footage provided by convenient tech, which Nolan is conveniently not destroying. Maybe this time you'll learn. We can't show much more of this scene, so instead, enjoy these royalty-free pictures of puppies while I remove a sin for the sheer brutality of this train sequence. This is exactly the sort of shit an actual supervillain would pull to demonstrate to Mark how fragile humanity is and how they're powerless to resist Voltramite supremacy. No oh, puppies. I see you almost die to protect them. Maybe you were a Viltrumite when you came to Earth, but you've changed. Saying this to your father after he just used your face as a weapon of mass destruction. I don't know if this is a Viltrumite quirk, but I feel like Mark's suit shouldn't be moving independently of the blood that's covering it. Omni-Man is like breaking the sound barrier right now or some shit. So again, where is this footage coming from? If Cecil brought Joseph Kaczynski in to direct, we have a right to know. Omni-Man is a dick to this boat. Twice. I can always start again. Make another kid. Nothing in this season has really answered the question of why Nolan had a kid in the first place or why he did such a bad job of indoctrinating Mark into his whole master species belief system. I mean, not that I wanted that, but we all know you have to start such things pretty early. <laughs> right? If I have to watch this game, I'd have a better view from above. Believing the only thing preventing baseball from being watchable is altitude. This is a waste of everyone's time. There's so much more I could be doing right now. Well, yeah, but it comes with my Amazon Prime subscription, which is worth it for the two-day shipping alone. And this show is by no means the worst. Oh, we're still on baseball, aren't we? When he feels joy, we feel joy. We interrupt this flashback, which interrupted a truly epic superhero ass beating to bring you Debbie explaining the unshakable bond between parent and child. And as sweet as that is, it ends up making this scene entirely... <laughs> Mark plays stickball really well, and everyone cheers, and that is a lie. Who cheers for someone else's kid? In fact, there are only five other people here in the bleachers, and if the teams are even, the four blue-shirted kids here mean there should be at least eight kids total. Now, unless none of the blue-shirted kids have parents that love them enough to put up with baseball, why is everyone cheering for Team Red? Mark's blood not being invincible. I can't begin to explain the devastation. All the important people just so happen to be tuned into the same news position channel at this exact time. Show continues to give us updates on the whereabouts and goings on of the Mahler twins when, at this point, we don't care. And if we're honest, did we ever? This Hatem book. The Guardians of the Globe and Adam Eve are on the scene. Okay, the Guardians mean well, but rescue operations like this are incredibly complicated. I doubt Duplicate has a clue how to safely remove this child from these iron bars and don't even get me started on Rex Splode literally blowing up rubble to find survivors. To keep your remarks safe. Nolan Grayson officially died when the house across the street exploded. Sure, won't well, look at all suspicious that Nolan Grayson, who looks identical to Omni-Man, died on the same day that Omni-Man went on a rampage and also disappeared. At least Clark Kent had f***ing glasses and a different hairstyle. And don't be alarmed if you see yourself in Mark on the news. We sent proxies to the funeral. They've already had the f***ing funeral without even telling Debbie Nolan is dead? And the media were there? Holy s***. Won't Debbie's friends and family think it a bit odd that they weren't invited? No one was doing everything under my nose and I never saw it. I wouldn't be able to live with myself if I didn't make things as right as they can be. Oh my, that wasn't a jab right into Debbie's heart. This devious prick just angered me so much that I was compelled to give this a sin. But then I realized I felt that way because his character was written and performed so well that he made me feel a feeling which compelled me to remove a sin. But then I realized that making me feel anything against my own will is an automatic ad, so... Also, saying Nolan was doing everything under my nose would be overselling it a bit. I mean, he did kill the Guardians of the Globe, but aside from that, all we have evidence of him doing is raising a family, writing travel books, and saving the world occasionally. I said stop! Ooh. Just a reminder that Monster Girl can only do this a certain amount of times before she Benjamin buttons herself into oblivion. Was posing for the Discount Avengers glory shot really worth that? We get it. They're a team now. Moody montage of life returning to normal set against an equally moody indie song. Cliché. The animators, who obviously took advantage of a sale at the generic green backpack store. The angle on this shot is weird and makes it look like Debbie is sleeping standing up against the wall. But the real issue is that with all the bullshit technology at his disposal, Cecil still couldn't get her a bed. Wait a minute, you know he's invincible? Oh man, you know too? Oh, thank God, I thought I blew it. You did. But fortunately for everyone involved, these slip-ups tend to only happen when both parties are already aware of the secret and the plot just needs them to both get on the same page as quickly as possible. You've been drifting and out for almost two weeks, but my guys got you patched up good. Taking credit for someone else's power of invincibility. Invincibut. 
The water in America drinks so conveniently from their taps is laced with a chemical that inhibits the ability to see certain frequencies of light. Using your show to invent insane conspiracy theories is all fun and games until someone attempts to cure themselves with magic rocks, invest their life savings in a psychic stockbroker, or awards an Oscar to Army of the Dead. There's enough actual madness in the world without having my animated shows add to it, thank you. You and everyone else in America do not have the ability to see the things in this room. You'd be surprised how often we use this. I swear the show is making this description just vague enough to make me look like a dick for questioning it. But the show forgets that I have zero issues looking like a dick, so here we go. Let's assume that the chemical in question has been invented without a single whistleblower coming forward about this tampering with the water table. How does this work in the real world? Okay, this room is flooded with that light, but how do you use it outside of this room without it looking like a sudden white void of nothingness has suddenly appeared? We monitored your father until he left our solar system. He didn't change trajectory, so he's going somewhere pretty damn far away. Nor he waited until he knew he was out of range and then changed direction. Basically, Cecil, you don't have a f***ing clue, so don't you stand there and expect me to take your retina-altering dihydrogen monoxide quietly. Guess who's finally getting his power? Previously on Invincible. Again. You know, Omni-Man is my- Said your dad was killed when a gas line blew up across the street. Not that hard to figure it out from there. Right? What did I just say? Oh man, it's so good to see you're alright. I mean, after everything on the TV about you and Omni... William f***s this up again. And again, it doesn't matter because the person who he thinks doesn't know the secret, and really shouldn't know the secret, knows the secret. Someone's flying towards Earth from deep space. We're still trying to figure out who it is, but... Writers thinking we would fall for this Omni-Man returning to Earth fake out with less than 10 minutes left in the episode. You know about Mark and Omni-Man now, so you might as well know about me. <laughs> Why? What kind of logic is that? This is like Cecil saying, Welp, you know about the Invisi potions we've all been pumping into your faucet, so you may as well know about the aliens that killed Kennedy, or the AI from the future that now runs the planet after manipulating the internet into creating the Snyder Cut, just as a demonstration of its power. From the sounds of it, I'm the one who should be apologizing if I'd checked my orders properly. I would have seen that Earth was flagged for Viltramite takeover. Yes, but that would have been mighty inconvenient for a series that depends on keeping its main character in the dark until the finale. Much better to make you exactly as incompetent as the plot requires until it doesn't anymore. Can't imagine what you're going through. Literally. Never even met my father. <laughs> I'm sitting this season for not having more Seth Rogen. I mean, Alan the Alien. What's the plan in the meantime? How do you say next season on Invincible without saying next season on Invincible? You think you could do these things, but you can't, Nemo! You're not even gonna be here, are you? I'm not even supposed to be here today. It starts with one of you, then... Principal Wiggins barfed on the lumberjack that was sitting next to him. Mayor Grundy barfed on his wife's tits. This is gonna be a little awkward for both of us. You see, there's a certain thing that happens between normal, healthy people. It's called chemistry. It's kind of like peeing your pants on purpose. What? If peeing your pants is cool... Consider me Miles Davis. Hit me. What? Hey, Joey, did I not tell you just to do it? Now I'm telling you, you gotta do it. I ain't hitting you. Hey, I'm your little brother, Joey. I'm telling you something. I know what you said. I ain't doing it. Who the hell are you? I'm... Uh... I'm... Batman. Okay, you're an animal! Yes, there we go, you're a tiger! You're Tony the Tiger! You're great! Darkwing. Janet's made a lot of talk talking to my ear holes about you. Michael, 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 Clyco, Clyco, Clyco. That's some good meatballs, boy. Freeze. Guys, we get it. It's a code red enough. Oh, hey. It's the Iceman. I'm just trying to figure out what are your powers again? You're just connected, man. But that's what happens when people get into air battles. More! Robot. I have a name. It's Dennis. Dennis McCoy. Hello? Do you want to die tonight, Cece? You're terrified of me, aren't you? I am not scared. How's it going in here? I brought snacks. So many snacks, so little time. Holy conflagration! Wow, that guy is toast. This chick is toast! <laughs> The last time, join me or die. Don't you dare shush me. Just know I have a whole bag of shh 
with your name on it. That was the best night of my life. I'm about to eat nachos! It's the greatest moment of my life! Calculating landing ellipse. Based on our last uncorrupted nav state, I'd say we're somewhere in this 60 by 120 kilometer ellipse. We just gotta close in on the downrange variables. It's about the math. This is it. That moment they told us about in high school where one day algebra would save our lives. Don't open that! It's an alien planet! Is there air? You don't know! What is your purpose here? Nobody exists on purpose. Nobody belongs anywhere. Everybody's gonna die. Blow the bomb, Harry. We're with you. Guess what Donald found when we searched your office? Tiny pies? Say I'd see you in hell. We have such sights to show you. Hansel. So hot right now. Hansel. Surprise, motherfucker. Is he a good guy? You can't handle the truth! What was the name of that place in Bordeaux? The one with the chocolate pastry thingies? How can you think of food at a time like this? Who's your boss? Machine Head. Machine Head owns the trash company. Uses it to ferry drugs to stash houses all over the city. Beautiful, super awesome, sexy stash house. The only place we're guaranteed to find Machine Head is 60 stories up. Inside this building, there is a level where no elevator can go and no stair can reach. And I need all of you to stop what you're doing and listen. Cannonball! Thundercats! This battle is beneath me. Not, not quite my tempo. Yeah, I mean, it sounds about like, bonk! That's about it, right? There's not much more to it than it. I'll fix you. We have the technology. Hey! Let me up, asshole! If this is some joke or some weird sex shit, I'm not in the mood. You're going to be beautiful. You're going to be- I don't get a BP. Start two large bore IVs sailing wide open. Type and cross for 10 units. Give me four units of O negative down there. Stat, drop an NG tube, and get Dr. Benton in here. There's no place for a pediatrician. Mark. Mark. Mark? Mom? Oh, hi, Mark. And no sex. <laughs> uh, no sex. Are you insane? What about school or, or college? Your mom goes to college. You can't. Save the world, Samantha. You think you could do these things, but you just can't, Nemo! How does a machine have emotions? By subjecting myself to erotic imagery. Okay, campers, rise and shine, and don't forget your booties, cause it's cold out there! It's cold out there every day! I finally rest, and watch the sunrise on a grateful universe. Were you... were you blackmailed? Did they threaten me or Mark? No. Then why? You need to trust me. Like sands through the hourglass, so are the days of our lives. <gasps> Come with me if you want to live. No, never. You can't. Where's Mark, Debbie? Where's Waldo? Where's Waldo? Hello. Okay. Mm. New teeth. That's weird. Autobots? Transform and roll out. Advantage to being a clone. I don't know, it's kind of like we, we almost finish each other's sentences. If you deliberately sabotage my band, I will f you like a pig. Now, are you a rusher or are you a dragger? That is a much longer story. One that can wait until whatever crisis this is has been resolved. By all means, Dr. Selden, speak. Over 9,000! Have you been smoking any pot today? How high are you? Thumbs up their asses. Thumbs up their asses. Do you have any idea how much I make a year? I mean, even if I told you, you wouldn't believe it. This isn't flying, this is falling with style. Look what they need to mimic a fraction of our power. Danger zone. <laughs> it was at this moment that he knew he f***ed up. I exist 
only to protect Krypton. That is the sole purpose for which I was born. Uh. Oh my! That is a no-no! Did you see that? Did you see? Oh, that was amazing! <laughs> I've seen better swings on a playground. Wait a minute, where are we? You are no longer part of the system. You are above the system. Over it. Beyond it. We're them. We're they. We are the men in black.